Good evening and welcome back to We're Not Really Here. My name is Kel Spellman and with me we have got three brilliant guests in the studio. We are talking about, though, of course, the game that we've just watched there against West Brom. Manchester City won, West Brom won the final score. Um, I mean, it was very thrilling five minutes. Let's just get into that second half with Andy Marison, Paul Dickoff and Natalie Pavalek. Um, Andy, what was your assessment of that second half? It was what we expected, and um, we knew they weren't going to come out. It was whether we could break them down or not. And, um, you know, let's give credit to, to West Brom and their goalkeeper, who were magnificent. Um, kept everything that was thrown at them. You know, those last couple of chances at the end of the game were huge. You know, you must take them. You've got to take them opportunities, and they were huge. They were great balls from De Bruyne, right on the button. Um, this wasn't our night. Some insane say, saves, as Andy says there, by Johnson right at the end there. And you were saying that you've, you've worked with him, Paul. I did, and I didn't want to say anything before the game, just in case I sent fate talking about goalkeepers. <laughs> but I had Sam as a young boy. He was at Manchester United, at Oldham very briefly, and then at Doncaster for a season. Um, and he's, as we've seen today, he's a fantastic goalkeeper. I mean, um, he's in the Premier League where he belongs. I know he went to Villa on loan, and now West Brom signed him apparently, and he's a top, top goalkeeper. Um, and maybe I should have mentioned him before the game, and, <laughs> and he might have had a stinker, but. Look, it's frustrating, um, but, but we're seeing all the time that uh, people are dropping points. Chelsea have done it before, mm -hmm. um, and earlier on today, and obviously City tonight. But it's, it's a game we should have won. You know, the chances, uh, as, as well as Sam's made two great saves, you, you've got to borrow them two free headers in the box. I mean, that's that's the question I wanted to, to ask you, you both. I mean, as, as, as a striker, and of course, as well, you know, big header of the ball, isn't it? And they, um, they were tough chances, but you've got to be... Should I be asking more there from from the players there? Because I'm I'm looking at that Andy and going, if you big big game players, if it falls to Aguero there, I fancy him to put one of them in the back of the net. Is is that fair to say? Do you think? Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, you've got to hit the target, and they have. You know, we were we were alluding to top, heading the ball down, maybe to get it ricochet off the off the surface. They were both at his feet, um, but you know, it's it's. Uh, it's disappointing because, you know, the opportunities have come along and sometimes them games fade out, but City didn't stop. They kept going, they kept going, they kept putting balls into good areas and, you know, sometimes it's not your night. Yeah, and it definitely feels like that because if you, you're looking, as, as we were saying at half-time, West Brom essentially looked like they were playing with six at the back there. We see it with five minutes to go. They're taking the ball down into the corner, their own corner, and they're playing out in the corner because a point is huge for them. But it feels like last season or two seasons ago, Paul, we would have conquered that. We'd have found a way through that. But tonight, like Andy said, it just really just didn't feel like we could have played for four, five, six hours and it felt like we weren't going to get through. I think performance-wise, it was positive. I thought we played really well. Um, didn't lose patience um, because it, it's difficult when teams do that. It's so difficult to play against. Um, but we kept creating chances and kept looking for that opening and... You know, if it wasn't for the goalkeeper making two, well, three wonderful saves because they'd won from Ke Kevin De Bruyne early on in the second half, um, City go and run away with, with it. But um, unfortunately, you know how many times you see a team on top, a team coming to defend. Their game plan was brilliant, Andy, wasn't it? They Absolutely. knew exactly what they were doing you know, to a man. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a great point you're making that. You know, two or three years ago, we were finishing them games off. But the game's changing every season. The teams are getting better at filling the spaces, you know, stopping the, the, the things that we're really strong at. They're preventing them. And again, I, I say that a Jekyll in the last 20 minutes, a player of that, I've been saying it for a long time now because teams are so good at suffocating areas and stopping us finding our little pockets that you lose balls at the end of the game. But, you know, it's uh, you know, credit to them because I thought they were they were very, very good and um, as you said, Paul, you know, teams are dropping points. It's it's a strange season at the moment. So off that then, Andy, I mean, of course, because it kind of feels, I mean, for myself, because I sometimes maybe get way too into it, but it feels... I love watching City with you, by the way. We need a camera on you. <laughs> no one needs to see that. But it, it feels a little bit like a loss, Paul. But like you say, actually, there's probably positives there and, and it's not it's not all, all kind of doom and gloom at the no, moment, look, look, We could be sitting tomorrow night and let's hope we are. The other team's dropping points again. You know, Liverpool and Tottenham playing each other. Mm -hmm. Um... Chelsea dropped points tonight as well, so maybe, maybe come March, April time, you might look back and say it's another good point. I know it's West Brom at home, I know it's a game we should have won, especially the chances we created, but it's another point on board. It's such a weird season, though, isn't it? Like we say, the, the table's crazy at the minute and everybody's dropping points. And you see it across Europe at the minute as well. So all the 16 teams that qualified for the quarterfinals of the Champions League, no, nobody's at the top of their league. It's it's weird. It's, it's mm. a, a, across Europe, It's people are, are feeling this... This season, Andy, yeah. it's just 
It's I think hard the, to the absence think of the fans it. is huge. You know, this this full house here tonight in them last five minutes almost suck a goal in behind the goal there. You know, it, 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 the extra edge comes and um, the intensity and the, the feeling um, late on in them games. The amount of times we have turned it around at the last death. And it definitely, it does make a change, difference. It has to make a difference. I think what stood out for me was uh, the, the body language of Pep when they, can, they scored their goal. For, for me, he knew then how important it was that we got to half time with a clean sheet because um, it was so hard to break him down. The chances were so... It's not as though it was eight, nine, ten chances. You know, we had a couple of chances in that first half. They had a very good chance. We went 1-0 up and then that goal really took the stuffing out of us because we saw how hard it was going to be. You know, just get through to that, keep it at, at a clean sheet and, and it would have been three points. Do you think as well, and 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 more out there because I know you were saying it, Andy. But um, you know, would you maybe be looking again to bring on a Mares or or a Torres just to maybe try and throw another attacking body on the pitch, or can that then overcomplicate it a bit? No, I think that would that was probably in the thinking of Pep because they, they were both with Bernardo Silva warming up for a long time. Yeah. Um, but I think with Aguero being on the pitch and as looking as if we're going to start creating chances, De Bruyne creating, maybe he felt that. You know, there was enough there. If Raheem or Gundogan scores, it's genius what, what he's done. Yeah. Isn't it? We're sitting here saying, fantastic, he's brought Aguero on, he's created space for, for two free headers and we've won the game 3 1. Mm-hmm. You know, it's only because the you two mean, chances we've missed that we're asking about Mares, we're asking about Torres. Um, but, you know, in his interview before the game, he said that it's the squad strength that's going to see them through. Uh, Southampton, of course, is our next opponent, who, of course, are a team in great form, amazing season. Um, what happens now, Andy, then for, for, for City, and, and what would you think would like to happen? Well, what would you think would happen in the next few days and in the game against Southampton? Well, they'll, they'll regroup, they'll look at the game. Um, I'm sure he'll look at, he talks often about the players who are the freshest and the, who are training the best. You know, doesn't really allude to um, rotating the system, uh, rotating the players, sorry. He, he, he talks about the players that, who are training well and the players who, who look as if they're on form. He's going to put them back in. Um, and it'll be similar performance, you know, we'll dominate possession. But I think if we'd gone out in the second half and you'd offered Pep them two headers at the end of the game to win the game, would he have took that? He would have done. Um, yeah. It goes over then to the finishing. Yeah, the Southampton game, I wonder if it might be a bit different, Paul, because obviously Southampton are in incredible form at the minute and they're likely going to go into that game thinking they're going to get something out of it, which is not the sort of always the, you know, the, the, the way that perhaps West Brom have, have gone into tonight. You know, we know that they're going to be really made up with that point. But Southampton, perhaps they're fancy in taking us, so maybe that'll play into our hands. That's yeah, a great point because I, I think it's a great game for us to be Southampton play. And they only play one way and, and they press high. They're very high energy. Um, they won't sit back and play five at the back and play four in midfield. You know, they're four four two, and they're very good at it, though. Now I'll say that. But the way they play, especially at home, you know, they want to go out and get after teams, whether it's Liverpool, whether it's Manchester City, whether it's Tottenham. You know, they won't change how they play, and I think that that will suit us at the minute. You know, because we, we are and we have this season struggled a little bit mm-hmm. um, to break teams down when they've when they've defended really deep. Absolutely. Um, well, we are going to be with you, of course, for the Southampton game, so who come join us and we're not really here. Um, we'll finish on a slightly more brighter note, finally revealing who is the mystery blue. So we've had guests here in the studio, lots coming in uh, online as well from you guys. The big moment has come. Let's find out if anyone did guess it right here in the studio. We were thinking maybe Barry. We were thinking Claudia Rayner. We can now reveal. Let's have a little look. Gareth Barry was indeed yes. That's inside the knowledge. <laughs> I swear it wasn't. I swear. It's my eyesight was so bad it helped. Ah, yeah. you, so it was the out all in With the, the pixels on it. Yeah, maybe I should have <laughs> took my glasses off and I don't like. You you had um, you had a little inkling there as well, you thought it might be Barry after thinking it was initially Rainer as well, Paul. I mean you did oh, say that yeah, to me. I can vouch for that. Slightly cheating though, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, Nat, I mean you've kind of stole the show there. You you hit us with that killer question around Owen Hargreaves and I'm with Mystery Blue. Yeah, that's it. I'm I'm done. Points on the leaderboard. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Um, <laughs> guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. Unfortunately, not the result, but um, so great to chat football with you and just hear what you have to say. Andy, thank you so much. Thank I hope you. you enjoyed it. And Paul, massive thank you as always. Natalie, absolute treat. Um, and to you brilliant people at home, thank you for coming to join us on We're Not Really Here. So we'll be with you for Southampton at the weekend. Until though, look after yourselves and enjoy the rest of the week.